Hello and welcome back to Football Index Moneyball. Today we have another pick of the day for you, and this is actually a player who I've bought and sold a couple of times on the index already. I started researching this one before Christmas, but his price has remained largely unchanged since then, so fortunately for me, I'll be able to get this out to you before anything major happens. For those of you who missed the monthly review on Saturday, the pick of the day player series is starting to benefit from the market boom of December, and hopefully now the transfer window's open, the activity is going to continue right through to the new season. So anyway, go check that one out if you did miss it, if you want an update on the recommendations so far on the channel and on my portfolio overall. For today's video, we have a 23-year-old wide forward playing in a Champions League team. We'll be looking at how he's hopefully going to benefit from more playing opportunities following a pretty serious set of injuries for a couple of teammates that have unfortunately ended their seasons. We'll take a look at how his goals and assists record versus his price and age seems to have left a pretty good opportunity for a profit how past links to transfers have resulted in some good peak prices. And then to finish off, we have another good set of target profits, which reflects the fact that he's been left behind by the recent market boom and should hopefully mean a great opportunity for us with benefit when the season restarts. Before we get going, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to be notified when new videos come out, you can hit the bell icon or you can follow me on Twitter by searching for at indexmoneyball. So the player I've gone for today is Maxwell Cornet. Cornet is a 23 year old forward from the Ivory Coast playing at Lyon in France. If you've seen my video on how I made 12k in my first year in the index, then there's actually a section on there where I talk about the fact that I bought and sold him for 100% profit over a pretty short period at the end of last season. At the time I made that video, I'd said that this is the kind of player who if you bought the dips and sell off the back of speculation, then you could keep making a profit. Since then his price has had its ups and downs, but he's now down at below the 82p price that he was back in that video and with the growth we've seen in the market since then this is great value on a young player. His current price of 76p is only 7p up from his 6 month low which was 69p which was before Depay and Rain Adelaide got injured so even though you're paying a higher price now I personally think that the two injuries make this situation even more attractive when you factor in the growth of the market as well. So for those of you who don't know, Memphis Dubai and Rain Adelaide are both out for the remainder of the season with ACL injuries, which has left Leon with two less forwards in the mix for game time. Dubai was pretty much the first name on the team sheet, so there's actually a considerable difference in the amount of time available for Corne to get in the first team. And he's left to compete with Traore, Terrier, Guri, Dembele and a couple of the youth prospects for two or three forward slots depending on what formation they go with. So after the injuries, Corne saw a bump up to 80p, but then he got injured prior to the winter break, which has meant that he's flown under the radar and it's left his price at this really attractive entry point. For context, Trey Ore, who's a year older and plays pretty much the same position, is currently up 24p since December 12th at £1.9. Both players have played 15 league matches and Trey Ore has 3 assists, no goals, versus Corne's 2 goals and 1 assist. So this is actually a pretty decent marker and you would normally say that on FI that the younger player would be worth more. But there are some other factors that make Traore a better hold in some respects, such as career goals and assists that would skew it slightly. But this is a good sign to start off with. Now moving on to take a quick look at Corne's transfer marked, we can see here that he has 18 caps and 4 goals for the Ivory Coast. So he's a pretty much regular starter for them. In the real distant future, this could end up being a benefit for him in 2 years time when the World Cup rolls around. So for anyone who has the ultra passive approach and is just looking for a strong player to buy and hold, He's a pretty good option. Looking at his career stats, he's played 211 games, scoring 44 goals and getting 20 assists, which equates to a combined 0.56 per 90. This is a pretty good rate for a young forward who hasn't really had a solid spell in the first team yet, as if you work out his minutes per game over the 211 appearances, he's only averaging just over 48 minutes. For his positional stats, you can see that he's played predominantly as a right winger with 72 appearances, but he has played enough at both left wing and centre forward to be seen as a pretty attractive utility player, which is always good for getting additional opportunities for game time and for transfer speculation. For Corne's detailed stats, I've taken the data from his foot mob to create this spreadsheet for the last season and a half to get a feel for what kind of PV potential he could bring once he gets a solid run in the team. And if we take a look at the right hand column, for the average per 90, you can see that there's some very promising signs, with 1.7, 2.2 and 3.4, he's well above my usual targets of 1 in the key areas. The one area I'd like to see a little bit higher is his passes per game, but I think that if he does get more game time that this stat could improve with Depay injured, 
as he's usually the man that everything went through. So this next spreadsheet was something I decided to take on when I had a quiet day over the Christmas break. And I went into way more detail on this one than I usually would. So basically I went on to transfer marks and I filtered to show 23 year old forwards then took pretty much all the players valued over six million pounds and added them to this spreadsheet. I ended up deleting a few because they weren't really relevant. But anyone who I deleted wouldn't have had a major skew on the results. It was just to make it a more manageable read. So I won't explain every column to you, but the one that I thought I would try and use to gauge the value here, which I've highlighted, is the career goals and assists per 90 divided by price. Now this is by no means a perfect metric for FI, but I thought it would be a decent starting point. And I actually went into this analysis with Corne as the player I'd planned on making the video about. But if I had turned up anyone better, then I would have switched to them. So it was good to see my instincts were fairly good on him, as there wasn't enough justification to switch to another player. So by dividing the career goals and assists by the price, you get an idea of the relationship, but without it really telling you anything in particular. But in theory, the higher the resulting figure, the better the value for money. I'd be interested if anyone could see a major flaw in this kind of simple check, so let me know in the comments below. But to me, it seems like a reasonable test to whittle down your options. Once I'd done this, I then had to factor in the remaining variables from the other columns, and also the media buzz and transfer speculation potential. But I think for Corne, these are actually pretty good, as he's had links for a few transfers in the past 12 months, including Liverpool, Watford and Man City. But he has just extended his contract to 2023 in September, so chances are high that he'll be staying with Leon for at least another season after this one. To be fair, this is probably going to be better for his development and his price on the index, as the links to transfers are usually create more hype than the actual moves. Now for the profit target analysis today, I've tried to go for the only players who have not yet won dividends, pulling them from the previous table. So if you wanted to dig into the stats any further, you can skip back and check them out. For my comparative purchase options, I went for Francois Camano at Bordeaux and Remy Udin at Reims. So both of these players are in the French league and Camano is actually the only exception to my attempt to pick non-PV winning players as he has 6p in dividends from right at the start of last season. And to be fair from the spreadsheet I put together, other than Corne, Camano is the player who stood out the most to me based on his stats and his price. With him being 10% cheaper as well, this is definitely a player I'm planning to keep an eye on. But he's had a pretty slow start to the season with 10 appearances and only one goal so i think based on the increased opportunities for corne and the added bonus of champions league football and past premier league links corne is the better option of these three players for my low target i went for adam unas at nice this for me is a great comparison in terms of making a case to buy corne as corne has got the higher average pb score peak score more scores above 150 higher combined goals and assists per game and lower price so I think I'll just leave that one there. Then for my mid-target, I went for Rafinha at Rennes. Since joining in summer from Sport in Lisbon, Rafinha's had a pretty solid start to the season with a PB average of 82, a peak of 187 and two scores above 150. So although it's a small sample size, it's looking like he's well suited to the index. I also think Rennes is a good platform for him to get a transfer from. So I think this is probably a factor into his price at this point. I think this comparison is more of a justification for Corne's price to be closer to Rafinha's other than the other way around, as Corne has a higher combined goals and assists over his career but a low one this season. Then for my top end target I went for Marco Asensio at Real Madrid. Now I wouldn't usually go for a Madrid player as a comparison as I think that they have some advantages playing in such a dominant team, but as Asensio has never won any PB and he's currently out with an ACL injury until around April. I think that it's a very reasonable top end target if Corne was to start putting in some big PV scores and getting his name thrown around for a potential transfer. Asensio has a marginally better PV record with 63 average, 201 peak and 6 scores over 150 versus Corne's 47 average, 192 peak and 5 scores above 150, but it's pretty close considering that Asensio is more than double the cost. The main plus for Asensio is that he's eligible for Spain call up for the Euros. But with this injury, there's no guarantee that this is going to happen. So I think this is a great top end target for us. This leaves us with profit target ranges of 29% for the low, 96% for the mid and 131% for the high. Now, whenever I get a mid range that's close to 100%, it always gives me a lot of confidence in a pick. So for me, this is a really solid set of targets. And this is without even having to aim for the players like Coleman at Bayern, Brandt at Dortmund or Sané at City. And for the record, those plays would all have resulted from 200 to 300% profit targets. 
But to be fair, without a serious step up in performance and a move to a major European team, I think these are pretty unrealistic for Corne in the short term. But it's good to have them there, just for peace of mind in the entry point. So overall, I think this has turned out to be a really solid pick to start the new year. I'm looking forward to seeing what this year is going to bring on the index, especially in the run-up to the Euros. That's all we've got for you on today's pick. Again, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment and subscribe. Also, if you know someone else who might like the video, then sharing with them would really help me out. There are links in the description for signing up to Football Index and Football Index Edge if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel for more strategy videos and the other picks of the day. Most picks are long-term holds with depressed prices for some reason or other, so often the picks can still offer the same value, if not better, a few weeks after. And the research methods and reasoning can help if you're new to the index and want to learn to analyse your own players. Thanks for watching. Good luck on the index.